Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Improv Bible Study here with Junk Shop Library. We will be turning today to the 30th chapter of the book of Genesis. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on. Uh, I know these have been coming out a little irregularly, so that might help you keep up. So will the, play the playlist, which is linked in the uh, end of the video and on the home page of the channel. All right. Genesis 30th chapter. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead, who have withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived, and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she named his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maid to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again, and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my son, my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she named his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter, and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived, and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place, and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. Now when shall I provide mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the speckled and spotted among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, they shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-streaked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. 
And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of hazel and chestnut tree, and pilled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle ring-straked, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring-straked, and all the brown in the flock of Laban, and put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in, so the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maidservants, and men servants, and camels, and asses. And that is Genesis chapter 30. We have the baby-making race between Leah and Rachel. And they fight over their husband and have sons upon sons upon sons as they made swap along the way. And Leah gets has her womb opened yet again after she left bearing in the last chapter. And she has son and son and son and a daughter, Dinah. And then Rachel has, finally, another son, Joseph. And finally, Jacob looks around and says, I think this will do. He goes to his father-in-law and says, You know, I've, I've been here a long time. You've gotten a lot of good labor out of me for no more than the price of two wives, one of them not real good looking. Um, so let's just, let's settle our accounts. I think it's time for me to go home. You know, Dad was getting on up in years and half blind when I left. It's probably time for me to go back where I came from. It's been quite some time. Remember, before he had both wives, he served Laban for 14 years. His mother told him to go up there for a couple of months. He went for a month, and after a month, Laban kind of snookered him into this, this accumulating wife deal. So 14 years just to get married to two of them, and we've had, what, 11 sons and a daughter since then? in sort of rotating sequence. Then, of course, the maids come in, so it makes the, the math hard to do. Anyway, it's been at least 20 years. So I, I think it's time to go home. Laban says, I don't want you to go home. You're doing a good job taking care of my cows. Stay here with me. Jacob says, I've taken care of your cows for a long time. You've seen how they've, they've prospered under my care. Laban says, yes. Why do you think I want you to stay here with me and keep looking after my cows? Jacob says, I'm going home. Laban says, I... okay, fine. Go home. Have, have some of the herd. You know, you have increased them. And Jacob says, well, I, you know, I, I don't want either of us to have just all the good or just all the bad cows. And you know how that's going to, that you know that's how it's going to turn out if, if we just try to divide them up. So I tell you what. I'm just going to take 
any of the cows with a particular color pattern, and the same with the sheep. Laban says, okay, and pulls all the ones with a particular color pattern out and sets them off to the side. Says, I figure sneaky little Jacob might have just engineered some, some mating patterns among the the sheep and knows what's likely to come out given his, his skills in the husbandry department. And Jacob says, okay, that's fine. And he takes all the non-brown cows and all of the solid color sheep off three days journey and does magic. No argument, straight up magic. Takes sticks and cuts little slits in them so that the colors of the underbark show through. And he takes those sticks and puts them in the water trough so that the sheep will see them. And lo and behold, that's the color pattern that the babies come out with. Straight up magic. That is some bull. Okay, I'm sorry. That, that just is. That's... That's not how genes work. That's not how genes work. So anyway, Jacob does magic. And then he takes the same magic rods and puts them in front of the stronger cattle when the stronger cattle go to breed. And that's what makes the stronger cattle babies. And he doesn't do it with feeble cattle. So that's how you get feeble cattle babies. And he separates those out to give to Laban so that Jacob has strong cattle babies and Laban feeble cattle babies. I'm going to stop that before I get carried away with that. And then verse 43, And the man Jacob increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants, and men servants, and camels, and asses. Is he doing magic stick magic with his servants as well? I sure hope not, but it doesn't say. All right. Before we go, I've got to back up out of the fun sheepy magic to the creepy business with Zilpa and Bilha. where Jacob's two wives are striving for his favor and can't manage to produce a sufficient number of sons between them to tip the scales in their perception of his favor. And so they take their dowry maids and give them to Jacob. And says, here, father children upon these. This is not the first time we've encountered this creepy custom in this morally 
bankrupt little short story collection we're working our way through, but it may be the the most grossly normalized instance of this. And I'm not in favor of it, and I think it's a great instance of what makes this, what did I just say, morally bankrupt short story collection? I think I can stand by that without fear of legitimate contradiction when we're dealing with stories like this. I mean, if your two wives want to barter your presence for the night among each other over a price of mandrake root, and you're fine with it, and they're fine with it, sure. But, but having the same regard for who gets the same amount of mandrake as whose slaves can be coerced into cranking out enough babies oping their boys, Free magic and slave raping. Let it not be said that the book does not have variety. It's hard to get more buried than that. Okay, I'm I'm gonna roll out of out of Genesis 30 at this point. We'll be back soon with chapter 31 for the continuing adventures of this lovely group of individuals. I hope y'all are enjoying this such portions of it as can be enjoyed. Subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Hopefully there's... Well, I don't know. The, the sheep breeding stick magic was, was entertaining, though, wasn't it? Just the rest of it, not so much. All right. Well, this is getting a little long, so... Like I said, um, we'll be back soon with Genesis 31. Hopefully you rejoin me for it. Until then, y'all take care, and we'll see you again soon. Come on now, turn off.